Hello YouTube, Dave here again. Uh, just back uh, playing D Dungeons & Dragons uh, Shadows over Mistara. And I just picked up a couple of healing potions and, at the shop. <clears throat> and we're going to continue on from basically where we left off. So we reached the Principalities of Glantry. And we meet the, the prince there. So uh, just as I thought the Dark Omens... This, the text goes by so fast. I wish there was a way to slow it down. Uh, basically, Shadow Elves are on the move, and we have to investigate into it, so we're going to get into a sky ship and do that, which is pretty cool. Uh, so, we'll just go ahead, and since this is a travel montage, I'm sure absolutely nothing terrible will happen. Enemies! So there we have the Shadow Elves, not quite the same as the Drow, because they don't have gods in this particular version of the game. They have Immortals, and there's still a rift between like the Shadow Elves and uh, the, the Normal Elves, but the Worship of Loth and stuff like that doesn't really exist uh, the way that it does in, uh, in the D&D that a lot of us are kind of used to. So, just pick that up. And, yep, Potion of Haste. Oh. As you can see, the, the times that I'm jumping, I'm not trying to jump, I'm actually trying to slide so I can pick up those items. <clears throat> because it is still faster to do that and mess up a hundred times than it is to pick up the items individually. Now, the one thing that I will say is sort of a negative in this game is there's a, a fair number of flying enemies, and every time they flap their wings, it automatically like pushes you away. Uh, and they all pretty much have attacks like that. <clears throat> and the problem with that is, is that they do it a lot. And with the Harpy, there are instances where you can jump up and knock her down. But, uh, yeah, the one time I didn't actually intend to slide. But there also seems to reach a point in the fight where she just stops falling down uh, when you hit her like that. Which can get really frustrating. So, and I actually want to save my spells for another fight. Now luckily she, she tends to take a fair amount of damage from attacks. Uh, but it, it can still kind of slow things down when... And again, her wings can also hit you and... It, it's just it's just one of the things that I think they kind of overdid it with the flying enemies. You know, having them fly and swoop and stuff like that and have some of those attack patterns are okay. But it seems like every flying enemy has an attack that just pushes you away so that you can't get close. Oh. <clears throat> but we defeated the Harpy, so it's all good there. <clears throat> Sit through that. Alright, so now we have a fight with Tellerin, who is a Shadow Elf and named one. <clears throat> the first phase of this fight, he summons four skeletons, and he won't reappear until you defeat them all. And uh, for the most part, I think you, you can actually defeat him as far as I know, or... I, actually, I don't know if you can. I think it's a scripted thing where he will get away. But I try to do my best to... Uh, uh, try to, you know, deal as much damage as I can, so reach a point where he'll just uh, initiate sort of a cutscene thing. Uh, but he can be very... Oh, that all those missed. Uh, but he can be a very kind of annoying fight uh, to deal with. Especially when he starts things like, uh, you know, put haste on himself and... You know, cast lightning ball, which I was able to interrupt there, which is fine. Uh, I might actually be able to get away with... Oh, there's the haste. Alright, we're gonna... Whoops! That is not the spell that I meant to have. Alright, so nobody can see me. I'm just gonna hit him there while I'm invisible. And the, un the skeletons are still just kind of frozen. That's interesting. So, cast an Ice Storm. So, yeah, there we go. So, you, you deal a certain amount of damage to him and then he'll show me his true power. So he multiplies, they all fireball us. That's what you get for spying on us. I'm tired of this game. Time, to, time I ended it. But who's this? It's a 
palette swap <clears throat> who has the same abilities. I'll let you go this time. I look forward to seeing you again. So tell her an escape. Like I said, I don't know if you can actually defeat him or not. Um, I think it's I think it's a scripted thing that he will get away. Uh, mainly because, like I said, the Elf and Dwarf both have unique areas that they can access if you have them in the party. And the Dwarf's uh, unique area actually has a refight with Telrin, which, if you succeed on it, actually changes one of the fights later on in the game. It actually uh, bypasses another boss fight for you, <coughs> which is kind of interesting. Alright. Hey, check the map. What is that? A huge tree or a for fortress of some kind? Seems to be a Shadow Elf stronghold. So here we go. So I can either uh, go to a nearby city, travel through the Forest of Despair, or I can cross the Forest Bridge guided by the Elf. So this is the Elf's area, which is unique to them, and that's the one I'm going to choose. Otherwise, there really wasn't much of a point in me playing the Elf. So we're on the Forest Bridge now. I think I actually got all my... No, I didn't. I still have... Okay. I thought I got all my spells back, but... So again, this battle is something that only the elf uh, can generate. So if you're playing, you know, if you're playing multiplayer and you have the elf in your party, then you can do it. Uh, but if you want to do this as single player, then you need uh, these things can be annoying. Uh, you need the elf in your party. So uh, yeah, I mean, I just I gotta say, like it, this game, I love this game, and it, I love Tower of Doom as well. Like Tower of Doom is probably still one of my favorite arcade games that I played in the arcade, but I really wish I had had the opportunity to play this one on, like, the actual machine. Uh, because this is just such a great... Okay, stop it, stop picking stuff up. Because this is just such a great game. And uh, they, they really did an amazing job of literally improving everything about an already excellent arcade game. Beatles, and if you recall, the, in Tower of Doom, the, the beetle enemies were really obnoxious. Because um, they actually had, like, larger health bars, and I remember, like, I had fought a black dragon and defeated it, and had more trouble with the beetles than I did the dragon. And, like, they were really the toughest enemies in the game. And they're back. But these ones all die... Whoops. Okay, they're coming from this side now. Uh, so these ones all die in a single hit, which is much... Oh, if I can... Alright. We'll just move on. So this is the reason that I wanted to do this fight, because it actually has a green dragon. Which is awesome. Um, <clears throat> I, I just love the... I love the way the green dragon looks in this. And that did absolutely nothing to it. There we go. Probably gonna end up dying here. But I'll try to get my spells off before that happens. And uh, another thing that's great about this is like so they, they actually follow a lot of the uh, the basic like the the, the back knee or Menser D and D rules. So for example, uh, the dragons can only use their breath weapons three times, and if they use the, like after the third time they use it, they they never get the ability back in, during the boss fight, which is just again a really really cool thing because that's how it worked back then. Oh, okay. Oh, there we go. Um, so I kind of want to take a death here to get my uh, get my spells back. And for the most part, in this run, that'll be the reason that I die. Let's bring back the blue one. Um, is just to get the uh, to get your spells back. Now you can pick up scrolls. Whoops. So there's the third breath weapon. So the dragon should not use that anymore throughout this fight. The only exception is the there's a potential optional fight. With a uh, with a red dragon, where uh, he'll warn you out of his lair as you're like going through and just like picking up all these treasure chests, and if you 
refuse to leave, uh, he'll hit you with his breath weapon. And uh, there we go. Oh, what's that? That's something I want, I think. Got a brooch. Uh, yeah, I think I'll take the brooch, actually. Uh, so he'll use his breath weapon to attack you and instantly kill you if you don't leave its lair. But uh, at the same time, when you actually fight the dragon, he'll still have all three. So that's the only exception of it breaking that rule. And I've maxed out my level and learned Conjure Elemental. Alright, uh, I don't think I have anything here. Monsters Born from the Egg of Wonder. So you can get, uh, you can get an Egg of Wonder in this game that gives you, a little owl it gives you an owlbear to fight on your side. Which is cool. So now we're at the huge tree. And that is our main villain. Her name is Sin. Not a single adventurer who has seen the huge tree has come back alive. Well, let's see if we can fix that. Gargoyles are immune to non-magic attacks. Uh, so one thing that did happen though, and I don't have any magic weapons, and I don't really want to waste my spell. Although, you know what? Gargoyles actually do drop pretty good treasure. Uh, no, that's just going to deal too much. It's going to take way too much damage to kill them. So I'm just going to bypass that fight. Um, <clears throat> so, and actually, I guess it wouldn't have mattered for the, the gargoyles, but... Eh. Um, so by bypassing, by using the elf or going by the elf's uh, special area there in that last mission... Uh, had I have taken the forest, if I had gone through like the, the forest despair, I think it's called, uh, I could have potentially picked up a magic item. Uh, however, there we go, we got a level 2. Level 2 is kind of useless though, because the only level 2 spell I have is visibility. But let's pick up that scroll. Um, so, it could, I could have gotten a Holy Avenger. And uh, it's a it starts as a cursed weapon, and the only way to purify it is to have the cleric uh, attempt to pick it up a number of times. Uh, and I think the number of times is sort of variable. But, with that sword, whenever you hit an undead creature, you instantly kill it. Uh, with the exception of, like, boss monsters that happen to be undead. So, I missed out on getting that item. But there are other magic weapons that I can get uh, in the game. So, I'll be on the, on the lookout for those. Uh, now, if I, if I go through and fight the Red Dragon, which I'm not going to do in this playthrough, because I think I'm going to do a second playthrough with a different character, and choosing different options, just because there's a lot of different options to, to kind of go through. Um, and I'm just going to go. Uh, <clears throat> um, the, the, if you fight the dragon, you can actually get a dragon slaying sword, which does extra damage against dragons. Uh, but I'm going to hold off on that because I want to get... There's another weapon that I kind of want to pick up. So here we have the fight with the Lich. Now this is the basically a palette swap of the final boss from the first game. Whoop. And of course he's got his paralyzing touch. Wow, I'm getting beat up. And that's not... <clears throat> Alright, um, now the Lich is immune to spells of third level or lower. But Ice Storm will still damage it. Thankfully, uh, my man of ice storm. So, uh, conjure elemental will also work. I only have one. Why is it not letting me select it? There we go. But we'll go ahead and do that. And you didn't see it there, but it was sort of that was the wind one, and uh, had like a figure kind of wrapped inside the tornado. But it was too high up on the screen. So anyway, so this fight is still kind of just as annoying. Uh, Jeez. And th this is where, oh god, this is where having the actual magic user makes this fight a lot faster because the magic user has several spells uh, that will damage him, whereas I only have, like, two. And I used all my castings of those spells in this fight. Well, it's not true, I used one Ice Storm. Uh, dear lord. I used one Ice Storm against the other Gargoyles, and, uh... Wow. Now, I'm immune to the gar uh, the Ghoul's Paralyzing Touch, but the, the Lich still can affect me, unfortunately. 
Maybe I should use some of my desperation attacks, because that actually seems to do pretty decent. Just spam that for a little bit. I mean, if he can spam lightning bolts, and that does multiple hits. Uh, so the, the desperation attacks do use up health. Here we go. Get out of there. All right. Ooh, ooh, I want that shield. So I got a flame shield now. <coughs> I believe I have underestimated you. So this is typical, you know, villain logic, where, you know, the villain really should have just killed my character, but instead they just put me to sleep and throw me out, and uh, they'll come back to regret that later. So I got the flame shield there. Uh, so the dwarf, and, no, sorry, not the dwarf, the, the cleric and the fighter both have the guard option, uh, which I do not. So it would show up here as a shield. Um, so the elf, whoops. So the only way for the elf to bring her shield up is to hit the attack button and then press and hold, uh, and then press back. And if someone hits me, I can kind of, you know, immediately launch a counterattack by pressing forward. But it's better to have, like, if you want to use, make the most of your shield, it is best to have either be the fighter or the, the cleric, because they can just use it as an ability, um, rather than uh, having to kind of go through extra steps to bring that shield up. But it is still, it is still useful to have, and I guess I should be making, whoops, making better use of it. Because you automatically do your uh, up and down attack, like up, down, and attack button. All right, come on. Now. All right, and a fight with the Displacer Beast. So hopefully it drops. Some of the bosses have the opportunity or have a chance to drop an item, uh, a unique item that you can be have made into a magic item in the shop. And the Displacer Beast one is one that I actually really want their, uh, I think it's their skin. Because it creates uh, the, the Displacement Cloak, which makes me immune to ranged attacks. So you see like when the enemies, the goblins come on, sta on screen and throw rocks, or the shadow elves come on and shoot bows, and that's all they do, they do that and then they immediately leave. I would be uh, immune to that, basically. But it can be random, I think, to get it to actually drop. And the other annoying thing about bosses is that there are times where they're just invulnerable to attacks. There we go. Which is annoying. So I've noticed the last few times that I've played through this game, um, none of the enemies have dropped things. Like, um, there's like a manticore that can drop a piece of its skin, there's a beholder that you can fight that can drop an eye, and uh, just nothing's been dropping lately, and I'm not sure why. It might just be certain characters have to hit it. I, I, I mean, I don't know what causes it, but it's useful when they do drop those items because you can make some great stuff out of them. And that Displacement Cloak is one of the most useful uh, things in the game, just because, again, it makes you immune to uh, those ranged attacks, which can be a pain in the butt. All right. Oh, okay. I thought for a second there I was going to end up missing him. So I picked up a level 4 scroll, so I should have... Yep, yeah, okay, perfect. I have another Ice Storm. Let's go ahead and use that now. Although uh, we are pretty much out of spells again. It's the one downside, like the Elf... It's great that the Elf has spells, but the Elf burns through the first spells really quickly. Which can suck. Let's open up that treasure chest here. See what's inside of that. Uh, just treasure. Just gold. Uh, so the trick with the Displacer Beast fight as well, uh, it's the same as uh, from the last game, uh, which I believe I fought the Displacer Beast, but what you want to do is, uh, stop that, is hit the one with the shadow underneath of it, so when it splits off into two. Oh. So for example, there's two of them now, and the bottom one is the one that has the, uh, come on, has the, uh, has the shadow, so that's the one I want to attack. God, the goblins. 
So another thing about some of these boss fights is they'll have little minions that just continuously respawn, so eventually the goblin that I killed will likely come back. Although I've just about got this one dead. Oh, there's there it is. Perfect, perfect. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Pick it up. There we go. Skin of the Displacer Beast. Uh, and the way that you actually use it, and I didn't realize this. Uh, oh, Gnome Village. Uh, great heroes, can you please help us? Our village is under attack from monsters. Would you come to our aid? I will definitely uh, go save the people of the Gnome Village. Uh, so the way that you actually get the items, because I have the skin, but it doesn't do anything right now, so you have to talk to a shopkeeper, and uh, there you go. So when I come back, and that's, that's everything I can do there. Okay. So now, when I start the next section, I press back and I will have the uh, Displacer Beast Cloak. So what that means is, like I said, that, that rock, just passes right through me now. I'm still vulnerable to fire right now, which kind of sucks, but um, it's, it's nice that those other ranged attacks don't uh, don't damage me. And uh, then I get, all, I get all my spells back. Cool. Alright, so we're just going to finish off these these, these this fight here, and uh, once we get the screen cleared of enemies and get the little fairy telling us to go, uh, I think we'll end it. Oh, gosh dang it. Uh, I was going to say we'll end it here. We're still going to after I deal with these skeletons, but I guess since I've already got them, I may as well go after those treasure chests. Uh, one of them is trapped and will summon more skeletons. Oh, okay, perfect. Uh, Alright, so we're going to end the episode here. I uh, hope you've enjoyed, been enjoying this series so far. I just love playing this game. I think it's great. So I want to thank everyone for watching, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Yes, I know, I'm going to go very shortly. <laughs>